Welcome to another session in the educational series about Vaultize. Vaultize, the enterprise platform for enabling secure file sharing, anywhere access, and mobile collaboration with end-to-end -end data security and flexible deployment options. Hello, my name is Gary Cook, and I am the Chief Solutions Architect for Vaultize in North America. In this session, we're going to create a user in the Vaultize environment, and we're also going to make sure that that user's ID works on not only on their workstation or desktop laptop, but also on an iOS uh, iPad device. So let's get started. First, we're going to log in as the admin for our AAAA company. And now you'll see basically we come into the screen for the admin. Um, this screen shows us everything at a glance about our environment. We'll go through here real quickly. The number of allocated users and how many actual users we have. Allocated devices and actual devices. The deduplication benefit that is being utilized by the storage and all the capacity that's been purchased. And then how much capacity is still available. So we see when we set that up, originally we put 20 users, 60 devices, 200 gig. And now let's move into where we create a user. So you come up here, we'll click on users. And we're going to come all the way over here so you can see name, usage, groups, and uh, several different policies that we potentially are going to select and show you how to create in the future series. Today we're going to click on add user. We're going to create a user. We're going to click create an individual user today. Uh, we could also do multiple users using Active Directory or LDAP syncing with Google Apps or importing users from a CSV file. But today we're just going to create an individual user. The display name for our user, we're going to create our user John Doe. And we'll look at jdoe at aaaa.com. And we're going to give John a quota of, out of that uh, 200, we had 20 users, so we're going to give him 10 gig. We're not going to add him to any groups at this point, but if we have created groups, we could certainly add them to groups. We can always do this later. The time zone for John, this server is US Eastern, and you have the choice of being able to assign an administrator role. So this individual could also be an administrator. Um, if you needed a backup in the company's environment, this would be a great way to assign that to a particular individual. So we see once again that there's two pages. We're on the second of two pages, so we're going to go ahead and do an add. And we have now created John Doe. So there's John. There's that usage. Um, right now he's got 0 out of 10 gig. He's not in any groups. And these policies that have shown up, we have some default policies that come with the product. Um, so these are already set up. We'll go through these, and I'll show you how to set up each of those in subsequent episodes of the series. But th this would be a great place to be able to show you how to do that. We can also block John from having access. So if there's some reason, uh, let's say John goes on some kind of sabbatical, and we need to block him from having access, but we want to keep it because we know he's going to come back, you can simply block his ID from being able to utilize the services of Vaultize. You can come out here and edit, and you can also click on the three buttons and see if there's other choices, and in this case we've got the delete, so we could delete John if he ends up quitting uh, working for the company. So let's go, and now that we've got him created, let's go out and do the installation of the, the software on his workstation and show you what that looks like. So now we've come to our workstation. Uh, we created John Doe's ID. When we did that, we also sent an email to John showing him what his email or what his ID and password were so that he could log in. We've also already loaded down the software onto his workstation. So when we go to do this, what John's going to need, just double click on the Voltai software here. What John's going to need is his username. So we know his username is jdoe at aaaa.com. Com. We'll include his password, and we're going to see that he's already going to this server at this particular address. So we're going to click on Next. John is now going to see that there's potentially keys being generated. It's going to take a minute. He's already set up. He's finished. It says Voltize is going to start in a few seconds, and we'll be able to utilize the icon sitting in the system tray. And after about a minute or so, we see the Voltize icon is functional. We see information here by doing a right mouse click. There's currently no files in process. Um, Mr. Doe's only used zero out of his 10 gig, so he hasn't put anything out there yet. We click on My Vault. We're going to actually go out and see the web GUI. Um, then we'll go through here a little bit just real quickly to show you what it looks like for the end user. I'm going to shrink this screen down a little bit. 
See where we can drag and drop a file? We're going to take this file right here. We're going to drag and drop it and let it be processing. So it's already uploaded in. So now we see on our home screen that that file I just moved up is already up on the server. It says it was updated. I can share it if I want or I can delete it. If I come out here to the shared area, so you can see that, we'll see data that's been shared by me or shared with me. And here it talks about in the lower right hand corner, the file has been uploaded to the server. So I can get visual confirmation also. No data has been shared with me or and I haven't shared any data yet, or I should say John hasn't. If we look at the all data folder, this is all the files and folders that have been synced up to the Voltai server. In this case, the only thing that's up there right now is that file we just saw. Okay, so once again, we can share it, download it, um, put it into the trash if we want. If we go to the trash area, anything that we would have deleted that can be shown up, we can leave this, the administrators could leave this out here for a period of time uh, so that we could come out and kind of do a self-help and retrieve our own data. We don't have to call the help desk to say, hey, can you retrieve my data? You can actually go out and get it. We'll come out here and I'll show you with the profile just real quick. If I look at account, this is John Doe's account. So we've got John Doe, J Doe at. You can also see that John's actually gone out and has, has accessed his data from a desktop and also from the iPad. So I'll show you when we log in on the iPad how you go about doing those things. And if there was any kind of issues with the software, needed to send something into support, it's very easy to send the log right from here uh, to go into the Voltai support people to be able to look and see what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and log out of here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire a piece of software so that you can look at my iPad screen. We'll actually come over here to my iPad. We're going to fire it up. Here's the Voltais icon. Basically, we get the Voltais uh, application software, iOS devices off of the uh, Apple Store, and for Android devices off of Google Play. So either one of those places can download the software. We'll go ahead and click right here. We're going to type in John Doe's name and password. Put in his password. And now we're going to put in the server address. Once you guys do this once and stay logged in, you don't have to put this in over and over and over again. And also, uh, if you would probably have a, a server name. I'm just using an IP address for the server here. I'm going to enter that PIN information uh, to give that extra layer of security. And now we're going to confirm that PIN. This is the first time I log in. Now you're going to see this is the Voltai screen off of the iOS device. Very similar to look and feel of what we saw on the workstation. There's that file, that six strategies. If I go to click on it real quick, we're going to bring it up from the server. And so now you can see that was the item that I dragged and dropped just a few minutes ago. Um, if I come through here as far as recent, you'll see there's the all data section. So once again, that's where I, any of the data that I, I or John Doe in this case, synced up to the server. Once again, you see that file because we showed it in the all data folder. Shared by me, shared with me, obviously nothing in there yet. Favorites. So favorites we could actually take, and you'll see on the screen we, the file was downloaded. So once again, we downloaded it to the, devo the mobile device, but we get a record of it showing on our desktop. So in case you were checking on something, you can see that, yes, it was in fact downloaded. So a kind of handy little feature there. Now that I'm looking at this file, if I wanted to, so I can see it is coming from the server. If I need to go and look at it offline, I can click on the star right there. And now what's happened is I've saved it locally on the device. So when I come over here to recent, if I scroll across, there we go, on favorites, now it's over on favorites, it's actually stored on the device and it is sitting there so that I can use it when I'm offline. So let's say I'm on an airplane without Wi-Fi, uh, then I can look and work on my data there. And then last but not least is the trash folder. So once again, your ability to be able to see all the data looks very much the same on an Android device as what you're seeing here. It makes it very easy, easy for the user to be able to switch between devices and his workstation. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching this uh, session of how to create a user and the subsequent things and being able to show you how it looks on a workstation as well as an iOS device. We hope that you have found this session in the Voltize Education Series to be informative and educational. Please visit our website at voltize.com for more videos in the series educating you on the Voltize platform. If you have any questions or comments about Voltize, please send an email to sales at voltize.com. Thank you.